G'day, Ben from Duck Playing Chicken here with the second part of this uh, series where I'll be looking at the lighting of the kit. Now, if you're not interested in lighting uh, this kit, if you've bought it, then you can probably skip over this video and wait till the next one where I go through the, the painting side of it. But for those of you who are interested in how I'm going about lighting it, that's what this episode will be about. So first of all, I want to sort of show you an example of what I've done. And this kit has proven to be quite challenging to light the way that I want to. So if you're thinking of lighting this kit yourself, then, um, you know, you might learn a few lessons from me. Uh, and hopefully you don't have to go through the same pain. But what I want to do is sort of show you what I've got so far. Okay, so you can probably see I've got the two lights and of course this is at the base of the leg and also the uh, the thruster at the back there so that's just for the leg and there's actually three LEDs in here of course the other leg will have three and I think all up there's 15 LEDs that I'm going to end up wiring up in this kit which is an extraordinary amount for something that should be quite simple but I want to sort of explain why Normally, if I was going to do a kit with so many lights in it, I would look at using fiber optics. But because of the nature of the way this kit sort of goes together, fiber optics probably wouldn't work that well. There's too many sort of sharp corners that has to go around. So I am going down the path of using 15 individual LEDs. And the ones I'm using are these. They're tiny little Litz LEDs. And so these are a warm white and uh, if I light this guy up, they can, uh, you know, they pack a pretty solid punch for something so small. So I'm going to be using these warm white um, Litz LEDs. I think they're two mil or something like that. They're tiny, um, and they're relatively inexpensive these days if you're buying them, you know, via eBay or AliExpress. So 15 of these. And if I need to color them in any way, I'm using uh, clear paint, like the, the clear uh, Tamiya paints. So that's sort of the path that I've gone down. And I've only sort of wired up half of the kit, maybe a little bit more, so that I can actually show you how I've gone about it. Because it is quite tricky in some places, especially in the leg. And I also want to talk about the power source. This is a coin cell battery, very common, three volts, you know, uh, very commonly used in model lighting. But I'm going to need something with a little bit more, a little bit more charge in it, let's say. So I'm going to actually be using uh, this little LiPo battery. And if we hold on up, you can see it's 3.7 volts at 150 milliamps. And the good thing about this is a, it's rechargeable. So it actually comes with just a charger, um, a USB cable that you charge it with. It's actually got the circuitry on board with the battery to protect it from you know, being overcharged. So it's quite a good little unit. And um, these little packages, you know, they come in sort of various, um, various voltages and capacities. I've chosen this one because it's nice and small and I've worked out that I will be able to fit it within the model so it'll all be enclosed. I don't need to sort of wire it up externally and it's going to have a little bit more life in it than a coin cell battery. So that's the power source I'm going to be using. The other thing I wanted to quickly go through and I apologize if this is, uh, you know, if you already know this, but I sort of want to talk about how I'm going to go about wiring up all 15 LEDs and so I've got this basic circuit here and those of you who know electronics would recognize that it's what's called a parallel circuit. So the way a parallel circuit works is the voltage goes uh, or the charge goes from the battery and it is delivered to each of the LEDs. Okay so this is the positive end of each of the LEDs and this would be times 15. All the negatives are connected up to a common wire and then fed back to the battery. I've got one resistor here and anyone who knows about electronics knows that this is a bad idea. Normally what you would do is you would have a resistor on each of the LEDs when you're wiring it up in parallel. 
And the reason you do that is because the LEDs, even though they might come out of the same factory, the tolerances aren't always that great. So they'll have slightly different voltage drops over each LED, even though they might be rated to a particular um, voltage. In the case, the LEDs that I use are 2.7 volts uh, voltage drop. So it can vary. So that's why you would normally have a resistor across each one. What I've done here is I'm just going to put one resistor in. And what this could potentially do and why this is a problematic circuit is that you can have some variation in the amount of light that comes in the LED. You know, some might be dimmer than others and it won't be consistent across the board. For me, I'm not too concerned about that. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting um, a reasonable resistor on there to reduce the charge going through so I'm not going to uh, inadvertently burn out any LEDs. But normally if you're doing this, the safest bet is to put a resistor um, with each LED. I'm doing it this way because I'm lazy and I also don't have enough of the, uh, the resistors that I want to use and I, I want to get it built. Worst case scenario, I get a couple of LEDs burn out. Um, no big deal. I'm still going to have a, you know, a painted model. It's unlikely that's going to happen. Um, it's more likely that I might get, might get some variation in the brightness of the LEDs, but I don't think that's going to be too noticeable on the kit. So I just want to sort of point that out in case anyone noticed while I was sort of uh, showing you how I've gone about it and if anyone picked that up. So not the best practice, but it's what I'm going to use. So that out of the way, the first thing that I want to show you is how I went about uh, putting the leg together. At the moment, this is taped up. So uh, let me get the other leg assembly and I'll show you the process of how I went about uh, setting up the LEDs in it. So here's the other leg. I'm just going to sort of take it apart. Now the biggest kind of problem I have with this is that there's a couple of seams and they're right down the middle of the, of the leg uh, on both the, the front and the back of the leg. So because, you know, obviously this part here is going to be a separate color and this part is the white, I'm going to have to do some masking. I'm going to have to sort of put all this together, deal with the seams and have the wire hanging out ready to go. So it just makes it a little bit more awkward than say if I was doing a, you know, normal uh, Gundam model, for example, where they don't tend to put seams right down the middle. Uh, certainly for master grades and, and perfect grades that I built. So these pieces are just sandwiched together. There's a poly cap in there. I'll leave that in for now. And so this thruster has like a little slot and it just fits in there. So we're gonna to have to drill a hole in that to put an LED in. And then I'm gonna to have to separate this out. Actually, before I separate it, oh, I know I showed this in the previous video, but if you can see those clear red pieces, they actually butt join together. So we're going to have to take those out and uh, cut them down so that we've got enough room for wires to be fed out the back of them. Okay. So take all the rest of this the guts of it out. And so here we've got you know, these little pieces, the little red pieces. And the absolute first thing I'm going to do is cut them down to size. I'm gonna cut them back quite a bit. So they just sort of pop out. They do have a left and right. So they're sort of keyed. They've got a guide on them that sort of feeds them in. So uh, they go in the right way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, my nippers that I normally use just for getting bits off the sprue and I'm going to carefully trim it. I am wearing my safety goggles at the moment because this stuff goes flying. Keep in mind it doesn't need to be pretty because it's not actually going to be seen. So I'm going to test that now. So if you compare it to you know, so the one on the left is cut down and you can see there's sort of going to be a bit of space behind it to feed the wires whereas you know, the one on the right there, if it'll focus, 
one on the right is actually higher and there'd be no room to feed the LED out of the back of it. So it's just about sort of trimming them down to size. Take the other one. And just be really careful, you really should be wearing safety glasses when trimming clear parts. They tend to be a lot more brittle than the coloured plastic bits. So you just need to uh, make sure you're following the safety precautions. And so what I'm aiming for is enough of the, the back of it to be cut off so that I'll be able to feed the LED in there and I will also be able to light block it properly. And now we have to cut down uh, pieces. And if, I, if I sort of put them back together, you can see I've now got room to run the wires out the back of them. I kind of understand why they designed it the way they did uh, because having them sort of join up together like that, it means you're not getting any any other parts of the inner leg sort of being able to be seen through it. You know, it's just a bit cleaner. But for our purposes, we want to cut it down to size. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of sand them down so that they're reasonably flat. And I'm just using a coarse sanding sponge here. I mean, this part's not really important, but it just makes it a little bit... I'm going to try not to get them mixed up too because they are key to going one side or the other. So yeah, it doesn't need to be this neat while I'm here. I might as well send it in. Keep in mind, the bottom of the, the leg here I will be using two LEDs before I sort of seal it all up and, and deal, with the, deal with the seams. All right, there we go. That's in, I think I have plenty of room there. So the next thing to do is to glue these in place. I'm going to be sort of putting uh, light blocking paint over it. I'm going to be sticking the LEDs down with UV resin. So I just want to make sure that these aren't going to pop out at all. I'm just going to use some, to me, extra thin. And I'm going to just run a bit around the sides. Make sure it is pressed in properly first. So I'm going to let that sit and dry. And then when I come back, I'm going to sort of clear this away and work on the next steps. Okay, so I've glued the clear red pieces in place. The next thing is to start soldering up the LEDs. So I'm going to have three, one each for the clear red and also one for the rear thruster. And before I start getting the soldering, just for reference, for the, for the rear thruster of the leg, I use a two mil drill bit. So just in, uh, just in my pin vise and I literally just drill out the middle of it. Now what that's going to do is that's going to um, affect the tab that sort of holds it in place. But that's alright because we'll be gluing it in anyway. Drilling it out and trying to keep the drill bit as straight as possible. You'll be able to see it starting to poke through there. And it's going to end up making a bit of a mess of the, the tab at the back of the thruster, but that's all right. Use my knife to sort of clean this up. All right, so we now have a hole that goes through. It's a little bit rough, but that's all right because the LED is going to sort of fill it all up. So the, the tab on the back there just allows the, the LED with the wires to come out the, uh, the back of it. And of course that will be glued into place and also light blocked in there like that. So I'll have an LED, probably the leads coming down here, joining up with this one and the other one, and then I'll have a lead that goes, two leads that go up through the top of the, the lead part. Okay, so I've got these uh, LEDs here. What I want to do is sort of work out the, the kind of rough length that I need to join them all up. I'm going to actually 
solder them all together before I glue them. It was a lesson I learned from the other one that I did that it's actually a lot harder to sort of solder it all up once once they've been glued in place. So what I'm going to do is cut these. And yes, I'm just using scissors for these. It's uh, not using wire cutters because the, the wires on these um, particular LEDs are so fine. Um, actually, fine scissors are a bit, a bit easier. I also use them to strip the uh, insulation, which is really easy to cut it, <laughs> to cut it off. So try and just cut into the, the sheath. So I have one there. I'll do one for the other side when we join up. We'll just test that LED just to make sure it works. No point putting a dead one in. Yep, that's good. I do apologise if this is a bit difficult to see on camera. It is kind of fiddly. These wires are so um, so fine. It's a bit difficult to sort of show really clearly. I do actually have a really good pair of wire strippers, but. They are not made for doing something this fine. Again, just testing to make sure the ID is okay. Yep. All right, so we've got two here. These will join up, something like that. And then, of course, I need one for the thruster. So, I need to cut that off there. All right, so the goal is to basically hook up the positives all together to one lead and then all the negatives. This magnet wire, it's so fine and yet it's reasonably strong. The enamel coating on it you literally just sort of burn it off with um, let's make sure we've got sort of enough there, I ain't got plenty um, you can just burn off the enamel coating with your, your soldering iron so that's, that makes it really easy as well and I have the green it is important that if you're using you know if you're sort of following this path make sure it is clear which is your positive which is your negative because by the time you feed it through the model parts and you get to wiring it up to the battery. If you haven't used color coded wire, you're not going to know which is which, and you could end up uh, causing some serious harm. All right, Put that away for now. Now I'm going to bring in my helping hands and try to work out a way that I can bring all these together. I think I need to put some heat shrink on before I solder it all up. Soldering iron. Now the first thing you need to do is tin the wires, which is just the process of getting solder on the bare wire. You know, it makes it a bit easier when you come to sort of um, joining them all together. I might do a couple at the same time here. Good thing about one of these multi multi armed helper devices. And I can also tune up this as well. So our arm's going all over the place. Let's see if this will come up on camera. So you can see what the enamel wire looks like when it's been tinned. You can see the difference in the colour there. So where the enamels 
been uh, stripped off with soldering on. Now this is where things get interesting. So it's about trying to get all the red wires together all at the same time so we can solder them. Now if anyone's got an easier, easier process than what I'm showing here, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just going to line up all the ends of the wires together using a bit of tape to help. I don't think it's many tapes going to work. If someone's got a better method, please leave it down in the comments. I know you can get those, they're uh, almost like heat shrink. Um, they're little things that you literally slide them over the wires and then it sort of solders them all together and shrinks them. Uh, shrinks the wrap around it and uh, solders them together. But I haven't got any of those. So this is the method that I use. Looks a bit messy. I think it'll work. When you're wiring LEDs, you don't want to sit the soldering iron on the wires for a long time. You want to get the heat in there quick and then out again because they are sensitive, you know, sensitive devices, so you really don't want to be overcooking them by putting lots of heat through the wire. All right, so let's see if we can. So, there's actually four positive leads all joined up together, three of them from the LEDs, and then one of them from the, the wire that's gonna lead out. I'm gonna just pause it there. I'm gonna, um, I'll do the negatives uh, off camera, and then I'll come back and sort of show you what it looks like once I've got it all sort of salted in place. All right, after a lot of finagling, we finally got the two bottom LEDs and then the one for the rear thruster with the lines going up the top. Now, last thing I need to do is just tin these tips so I can test that it's all still working. I had to use some heat shrink just to make sure I didn't get any shorts happening. But essentially it'll be sort of one there, one there, and the other one out the thruster. So we're nearly there as far as the uh, sort of the the soldering goes. A tin the end of these so that we can actually check it. It's a good idea just to check your LEDs as you go, because once it's all sealed up in the kit, and of course, uh, yeah, you know, I mean there can always be a chance that LEDs blow once they're installed, but I'm going to try and catch them if they're uh, already problematic before installing them. We can see we've got three lights working. Beautiful. Now the last thing that I need to do before I sort of start installing this is doing just a, a little bit of painting. The LED out the back of the thruster here, I actually want that to be uh, blue, so I wanted to, you know, use a bit of clear blue. And what I do is I use Tamiya X23, just clear blue. And what I'll do is I'll actually just dunk it in. Probably not ideal, but I haven't had any problems with it in the past. Right. So I'll literally just take it and dunk it in. off any excess but you know it's one of the easiest ways I find to get the LED the actual color that you that you need 
So I just buy out big on you know, white LEDs. The other advantage of it is that they're all the same, well, they're all reasonably close as far as the voltage and the milliamps you can feed through them if you buy a whole lot of just white LEDs. And then I do all my coloring either through using color uh, clear plastic or by dunking them in clear um, Tamiya paint. And so far so good. I haven't had any issues with doing that. So, uh, you know, if you, if you're looking at sort of getting into LEDs in your model kits and you're not sure which ones to buy, I would recommend buying some warm white ones and just using clear paint to color them. It's kind of the easiest way to go. Okay, the, uh, the clear blue paint stride. And just to show you how that looks, uh, it's probably a bit hard to see on camera actually, but it is definitely blue compared to the white underneath. All right, so to fix these in place, what I use is just some UV resin, and this stuff's the uh, sort of cheap stuff you get from AliExpress, but I haven't had any issues with it. I think the first one I'll be doing is actually this thruster. So if I can get that sort of all lined up and in place, so I'm sort of feed it in and put a dab in there. I'm just using a toothpick to sort of feed a little bit in there. It is a bit gloopy, so it's, uh, it's not the easiest stuff to sort of use, but The thruster LED is sort of set up. I can sort of put that in place and uh, just loosely sort of set it up. Now, one thing that I have learnt from experience is to put a bit of resin on the back of the LEDs. Uh, this is going to be for two reasons. One is to Try and make sure that the wires stay on the back of it. That's sort of the weakest point is where they've been soldered. If you bend them back and forth a couple of times, they will just come loose. So part of it is just to keep them from bending the wires in that point. The other thing is to insulate it because I'll be using I'll be using some silver tape on the back of the red clear parts. So I just want to make sure there's no possibility of any sort of short happening. All right. Now what I want to do is try and get the LED so that it's sitting sort of fairly central in the the red clear part. Now I haven't frosted the clear red part in any way. I actually did sort of a bit of experimentation. And I found I didn't I didn't actually like doing that so I'm just going to line it up in the center as best I can also kind of consider where the wire is going to be fed and this is where all the fiddly work happens so I'm just putting a dab over where the wires cross over the red clear part and if I kind of hold it up to the light, you can kind of see how it's sort of sitting. It's not that centered, so I might just maneuver it a little bit. You can sort of see that's how it's going to look, and I kind of like that that look. It's not so much a like a headlamp as maybe a, a sensor or something. So I kind of like the look of that. Okay, so that one's sort of in place now, which means that it's basically ready to be light blocked. And I do a couple of things in order to light block it. The thing I do is use this stuff, which is tape, it's silver tape used for ducting. Um, you know, it's highly reflective. It also is conductive, so you just need to be aware of that. And again, that's why I sort of put a bit of, a bit of resin over the LEDs. 
just to insulate them a bit. But what I'll do now is take a little bit of this tape and I'm literally going to stick it over the top of the LED. So it's going to do two things. It's going to assist with the light blocking, but it is also going to have allow for a nice reflected background that the light can bounce off within the red clear part. That's my justification anyway, and I'm sticking to it. So I'll just cut off a small piece. The top. So this is only sort of the first part of light blocking. I actually will go in there with some fabric paint as well. Now you can see that's working pretty well. I like that. I like it a lot. All right. So let me go and do the other piece off camera and then I'll sort of talk about the light blocking, the rest of the light blocking process. The next step for the light blocking process that I use is this uh, chill up fabric paint. So I think I heard about this first on Lou Del Marso's Aztec Dummy YouTube channel. And it is fantastic for light blocking. It's nice and thick, nice and black. So I'll just use Bit of this, you'll be quite liberal with it. Make sure I get all the way around the the tape, around the base of the clear red. And the reason it's important to light block this is because there is that sort of gap at the bottom. So the if you didn't have proper light blocking you would be able to see some of the light popping out the bottom near the foot. And, uh, for me, that's not desirable. So now I need to give this a quite a lengthy period of time to dry. I'll also, um, you know, I'll let these ones dry before I do the light blocking on the thruster. But essentially, you know, once that's done, I might use a little bit of glue just to glue these bits down so they're not sort of flapping around and then I can sort of look at uh, gluing it all together. Okay the light blocking on the bottom part of the legs is now dry. The last thing I really need to do before I can sort of seal this up is to just make sure the wires aren't going to um, you know get crimped or caught on anything, so I sort of need to route them in a way they're not going to interfere with anything else. And I'm going to use a bit of UV resin just to sort of hold it in place. I mean, once it's all clamped together, it won't matter. It's really just something to sort of hold it in place. You can even use a bit of tape. and all over my cutting mat. The other thing I'm kind of hoping this will do is just alleviate any sort of uh, tension that's on the wires if it sort of gets pulled, you know, when I'm pulling it through the other pieces, just to try and prevent it from uh, getting caught on anything. And again, I'm going to be quite generous with this stuff just because uh, Make sure there's no light leaking out of the back of it. Now this one's probably not as um, not as important as the lower part of the leg, just because you're not going to you're not going to really see it leak out the top here uh, too much. While I'm waiting for the fabric paint to dry for the light blocking, I'm going to sort of talk about the preparation I do for feeding the wires up through the rest of the leg. Now, with these different joints and different parts of the leg, it actually gets quite tight in there. So even though these wires are nice and thin, there's a danger that they could get crimped or you know broken um, as they're you know as you're sort of posing the model. So there's a, a couple of things that I've sort of done to try and try and reduce the risk of that happening. 
So first of all, I want to talk about this knuckle piece. I don't know, is it a knuckle? Is it a knee joint? I'm not sure, but you all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Again, like the rest of the leg, there's a seam that will have to be dealt with. So let me try and do this without it all coming apart. Oh, there we go. All right, so to sort of show, you know, how this works, you've got these two uh, hinge parts that move in there. And as you can see, there's very little room in there for wires to pass through. And there's also a bit of plastic that sort of blocks it on the sides as well. So what I do is on the other side, I basically grind out these little bits of plastic in there. I'll show you on the one I haven't done yet. So you can see these sort of, they're like little walls. I need to grind them down because that's where we're going to be feeding the wires through. But look at the one we've already done. What I've done is I've used a bit of uh, heat shrink and I've just taped it down in place. That's all you need to do. But that way I can feed the wire sort of through the heat shrink. I don't need to shrink it, I just, you know, it works as a conduit, but it means that the wire doesn't get caught up in the um, in the hinge parts. So I take my handy nail drill. Why you want to drill your nails, I have no idea, but I assume it is for grinding, um, grinding nails, not for drilling them. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to grind out this area in here. Uh, and it sounds like my nail drill is quite ill. Uh, the noise that you hear, I actually had a, a bearing go on it, if you could call it a bearing. So it, uh, it went, <laughs> I was going without a bearing. <laughs> And ironically, it actually works a little bit better, but it just sounds terrible. Um, so that's what I get for doing, buying something cheap like that. But they are good in the fact that they're variable speed. So I might end up, you know, I know people swear by Proxon and I've got a Dremel there, but I tend to find that those things go a bit too, a bit too fast. And so you end up sort of melting the plastic more than just sort of grinding it away. Okay, so those walls are now taken out. So you can see there's going to be a way for the wire to go through. So next step is to get a little bit of heat shrink. Now I'm just going to use um, a bit of tape. The tape is just used to hold it temporarily until I get the parts together. Just stop them from sort of sliding around. There we go. That's literally just taped in place and then when I sandwich it together and just maneuver it a little bit of course being heat shrink it's uh, flexible but now you can just sort of see there's a bit of heat shrink in there and I can actually see light all the way through, uh, maybe not on camera, but it means that you can feed the wires straight through without any sort of uh, any dramas. Not going to get caught up on, you know, these hinge pieces, and it just means the hinge pieces are just going to wear, you know, just going to rub on the heat shrink, but it's not going to affect the wires in any way. So that's for the knuckle. The next bit is the top of the thigh. So it's made up of three pieces. We have a wide piece and then two halves here. If we have a look at what I've done here. So I've literally just used a bit of heat shrink as the conduit to run the wire through. So there's a hole at the top um, and it goes next to that poly cap at the bottom. 
because if you think about trying to feed a wire through if you didn't have that sort of conduit in there if you tried to just feed through the wire could potentially get caught up on things you know on the way so this is really just you know the wire is not going to sort of rub on anything too much in here but it's really just about um, making it easier to get the wire through before I sort of glue it together and deal with the seams. Uh, let's have a look at this one. So of course there's no hole in the top. So I'll grind that out in a minute. We go that in. Then. Never drilled out that hole. Put this back together and try and drill a nice clean hole and make sure I get it in the right spot so it's going to be in here. I'm just changing out the bit on my nail drill. Again, the good thing about these nail drills is you can get plenty of different types of uh, bits for them. So. There's basically a bit for every occasion, I think. Uh, do. And they're, uh, they're relatively cheap. You gotta remember, we're talking about plastic here. We're not grinding away metal or, you know, unobtainium. Yeah, okay, nice little hole at the top. Now, I think I found with the other one, I didn't actually need to didn't need to uh, tape it in place. Just use a friction fit next to next to the poly cap there, and it just sort of holds in place. I just need to push it down enough so it's not uh, visible at the top. to sort of show you how, how this sort of works. If I thread it passes out, no worries. It's not going to get caught up in anything in there. So it's a uh, Find that an effective, effective thing to do when you've got a tight space you need to feed a wire through. Just use a bit of uh, heat shrink. All right. So the last bit is the hip. So essentially, we need a hole sort of underneath here, and also a hole to come out the side so that the wire can feed into. You know, feed into the rest of the body where the battery will be kept. And of course, I've got uh, there's the left and right side, so I want to make sure I'm doing the uh, opposite. Let's see. They, uh... Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a marker just to make sure I don't mess up. This is usually the place where I do mess up. So make sure got that's where the hole is on the bottom. And the hole on the side is going to be there. Now if I show you the hip. I think in the previous video I sort of spoke about I didn't want to drill down the the guts of the peg that's holding on the leg so I've drilled a hole at the back here and of course there'll be a hole inside and that's how the wire will sort of feed through from the top of the leg through to the hip and then out through the top here so that's sort of the plan Whether the plan works or not is yet to be seen I'm going to use the same bit I did before to drill out the hole with a file and clean that up a little bit but that's what it's going to be sort of like uh, so now we've got the two of them 
and if I try to feed it you know if you envisage that the wire I've got the wire put a bit of a bend in it and we should be able to get it fed through there we go with relative ease so that means that I'll be able to glue this all up deal with the seams get that all cleaned up making it look uh, make it look beautiful but we can still feed the wire through no problem and that's essentially the process for feeding the wires up through the legs you know, you can, you know, just a bit of an idea of what I've had to do to uh, <laughs> to make it all happen um, but again it's just more about making it easier to feed the wires through once I've painted all this once I've painted, painted the kit so I just want to talk a bit about the main head unit or body unit the inner frame part I've actually trimmed away a little bit from these tabs here and the reason for that is because there's a, a box that sort of fits in the side here that holds the side thrusters and in the case of what I'm doing it's going to hold the battery so I'm going to show you what I've done here okay so this is the uh, basically the bit you can see here there's a couple of poly caps that should go in there but this is where the side uh, thrusters are going to go but this is actually all filled in so what I've done is I've cut it out and I've installed a switch and it's also where this battery is going to go so the 3.7 volt lipo battery I've got it's uh, you can see a whole lot drilled out the back I've also drilled out there's a center section here which was supposed to give it strength uh, but now it doesn't have so much strength it'll be fine though once it's all plugged in so this basically goes in the uh, feeds in the back there and then the battery sort of sits in place so if I need to pull it out um, I can do that I've also got yeah just a stand switch you can see here I've installed some magnets so I'm just going to sort of show you uh, what I've done here and I apologize it wasn't sort of done on camera but I wasn't really sure what I was doing at the time so um, let me take this apart again I've got two holes drilled out the back so you can see those two sort of holes what they're going to be are for the wires and the side thrusters are going to come in the side and then out the back and also for the wire for the switch okay so now it's together you can see we've got um, these in place so one of the side thrusters and of course the wire is going to be coming out the top there that hole above the peg I've drilled out a larger hole here for the wire to feed through just because it'll allow it to pivot without sort of uh, breaking the wire that's a plan anyway and so there's another one that of course goes on the other side now as far as how it goes into the body unit there's this sort of slot that it slides into and we'll make sure we get all the wires set up properly there we go and then there's this uh, back piece which slides on so you kind of start to see how that you know there's a top a couple of top pieces and of course the front the front eye as well that on that sort of gives you an idea okay so side profile and that's what the back looks like so you can still sort of get your finger in there uh, to turn the switch on or off and the other thing that I've done is I've magnetized the door so that way uh, if I get the door around the right way it snaps into place it just takes on so it's going to make it nice and easy to sort of access the battery and also turn it on and off I didn't want to have an external switch uh, on the kit that's not going to be on a base or anything so this is going to be the perfect um, uh, the perfect solution to that and just you know with the 
magnets I use the two mil diameter magnets and they actually just press fit into the holes that are already there on the door there's a series of pegs on this gray piece that I've cut down and again I just drilled a 1.9 mil hole and forced the magnets in there there's no uh, super glue or anything it's just all sort of press fit and uh, I haven't had any of the magnets come out yet so so that's I was pretty happy with that it took me a while to sort of get my head around uh, but yeah it, I think that's going to be the perfect um, solution so all the wiring of course there's going to be wiring coming up from the legs from the hips um, and it's all going to end up in this area in here there's actually quite a bit of room there's a, a front piece that goes on and a top piece but there's quite a bit of room there so um, that's that's going to be good the other thing to make note of is that there's even more lights on these uh, body pieces so if I take these off put that inside so if you look at this back piece these holes here before I drilled those holes out there were some little bubbles so molded into the uh, the plastic and I mentioned you know in the previous uh, previous episode I thought it was really strange that these were sort of molded lights and yet it actually comes with clear uh, clear red parts that fit exactly in these spots so the clear red pieces I have literally just used uh, just use resin to stick the LEDs in the back of them and then I've just covered the back with some uh, tulip fabric paint and these things just slot in so I'll try and get it lined up properly I might use one of these bottom ones but essentially that's what they're going to look like when they're in place and of course when I light them up yeah, that's going to look pretty cool so there's actually six of them um, six areas around the body is basically four on this back piece and then uh, I think it's on one of the, the sort of top bit um, there's sort of two more so um, yeah it, it just really strikes me as odd that they've got the, they included the clear red pieces you know in the kit but there's no mention of sort of how you could use them in the instructions so uh, I, I yeah it's beyond me I'm just all I, but saying that I am glad they included those clear red pieces it allows me to you know light this thing up like a Christmas tree so it's good all right so that's kind of what I've done as far as the you know the you know, part of the body um, you know give you an idea of the wiring I won't be doing all the final wiring you know um, soldering everything together until after I painted it uh, just because there's some things that I just can't do until it's sort of all you know set in place this is future Ben speaking and I've been editing this video and it is nearly an hour in length so I think what I'll do is I'll break up the wiring of this kit into two videos I know for some of you that um, you know you're not interested in that side of things but rather than make this uh, video you know two hours long I'll keep it to try to keep it around an hour so in the next video we're going to be looking at wiring up the uh, side thrusters and also the front the front piece of the uh, the main head unit so that'll be in the next video till then i'll catch you later